in 1994, one of my favorite movies hit the big screen. This was a real coming of age movie with serious implications, hard lessons on love, and an iconic hairstyle. Now, if you're sitting there right now thinking of the same movie as me, we just became best friends. Because the movie I'm talking about is, yes, Little Rascals. <laughs> now, I might have fudged a little bit on the serious implications, but I did not fudge on the lessons on love and or the iconic hairstyle. Now, there's a character in Little Rascals and his name is Spanky. And Spanky is a young boy and the president of an exclusive all-boys club. Do we know the name of this club? The He-Man Woman Haters Club. This club was made up of all the boys in the neighborhood who, in classic young boy fashion, thought girls were icky. They had developed a declaration that they were to live by, including certain rules and behaviors that if one were to break them, you were kicked out of the club. And they even had a super secret password to enter the clubhouse. Does anybody remember this password? You remember now? Now, I believe at one time or another, we've all been a part of or associated with a group of people that are exclusive. These groups come in many shapes and sizes and forms. I mean, perhaps you've been on a sports team where you had to exhibit some form of, ex of, uh, of advanced skill or talent in order to make the team. Now, not everybody makes the team, primarily because there's not enough room on the team, or you were like me and just didn't have the skills to be on the team. But maybe you were in something else. Like, maybe you are or were like a mathlete or a chess master or a member of a car club or a country club, a minister. A teacher. The list can go on and on and on. But there are certain criteria, and oftentimes stringent criteria, that one has to meet in order to be a part of the groups that we are involved in. And some even have super secret passwords or gestures to get into the clubhouse. Jesus has washed his disciples' feet, spoken about his betrayal. He's given the disciples a new commandment and has been teaching them about God and the promise of the Holy Spirit. And then he, he takes a deep dive into who he is and what that means for the disciples because he's leaving them soon. He's leaving them to be with the Father on their behalf. And after Jesus has spoken all these words, he begins to pray. Now, this is a special prayer. You know the type of prayer you pray when somebody is doing something you wish that they'd be doing different? So you say the prayer loudly in close proximity to them? Like the time Tim decided to sit behind me in my office while I was trying to work and play his guitar and sing every pop song from the late 90s and early 2000s? My prayer was very loud so that Tim could hear it, asking the Lord to remove him from my office. But I did it. It didn't work. Jesus usually prays in solitude, but not this time. 
He wants the disciples to hear him pray to the Father. He wants them to hear about the Father sending him to be among them and how he glorified God here on earth. He then begins to speak to God about the disciples and how he has given them what the Father has given to him. He asks the Father to protect them in his name, Jesus' name, so that they may be one as the Father and the Son are one. The disciples have been brought not only into relationship with each other through Jesus, but they have been brought into relationship with the Father through the Son. With no other requirement other than to know Jesus. Through knowing Jesus, they have gained access to eternal life. And that's great news for the disciples. They are now part of the Eternity Club. Good for them. What about us? What about the followers of Jesus that have come after this part of Jesus' priestly prayer? Well, if we were to continue our gospel reading, we will get to verses 20 and 21. And here's what these verses say. Jesus says, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Knowing Jesus means that we know the Father, and the Father knows us. Through the sending out of the disciples and the spread of the good news, we find ourselves in those that come to know Jesus after us being a part of the Eternity Club too. With the only criteria for membership is to know Jesus. It's all inclusive. There are no secret passwords or gestures. Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great if everybody knew Jesus? Wouldn't it be great if everyone was in eternity? There's plenty of room. Uh, look around this room. There are empty seats there, and there, and there, and there. Jesus has already done the hard work for us through his life, death, resurrection, and ascension. Jesus has created a way for us to know him. Through the waters of baptism, Jesus parts the finality of death in two. Just like the parting of the Red Sea for Israel, just like the parting of the river so that Joshua could lead Israel into the promised land, just like the curtain in the temple, Jesus parts death and ushers us into the promised land of eternity with him. This is good news that's been given to us. The good news of knowing Jesus. This is news too good to keep to ourselves. And I'm so glad that the disciples didn't keep it to themselves. My prayer is that God sends us from this place to share the good news of knowing Jesus. May we invite others to fill up the chairs around us so that they too can know Jesus and join with us in eternity. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, we come before you today praising your name. 
We give you thanks for your son, Jesus Christ, who makes himself known to us so that we may be known by you. We ask that you send your spirit to move us towards inviting others into relationship with Jesus. Eternity is too big just for us. Provide for us the opportunity to be the hands and feet of Christ through invitation. We ask this in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.